abandoned items on our streets left to rot just by our feet. Now that's poetry. Yeah, so late last year, I started a sort of a project um, on abandoned items that I've sort of seen as I go about my travels around London. Uh, things that have just been left outside homes or on the street or whatever. Um, and it's a kind of a project that sort of took several months and uh, I was going to continue it for a bit longer, but I'm not really going out and people aren't really leaving stuff outside anymore because of the coronavirus. So I decided to put together what I've got and here it is. It all started when I found a pair of gloves in a polystyrene box under a bridge. I actually found these gloves last night on my way home, but I was in a bit of a rush and uh, I couldn't film them. But um, yeah, I found them under a bridge near where I live. I, do, I wonder like, how did they get there and who put them there? Really unusual to see a pair of gloves. You might see one sock, you might see one shoe, you might see a glove, usually popped on top of a railing. But to see a pair of gloves abandoned like that under the bridge is quite unusual. It's interesting that the person who left them there decided to leave them inside an old polystyrene box that looks like it'll probably fall apart if you picked it up. But maybe they thought, well, I'm gonna get rid of these gloves, someone will pick them up, and perhaps I'll give them a, you know, a handy box to take them home in. Fascinating. Quick update on the gloves in the box. Um, they've been taken out of the box. Someone came and looked at them, thought about taking them home and then decided not to and, and, and put them back down on the pavement. I'm hoping now they might become a, perhaps a nice family home for a family of small field mice. What we've got here is, uh, some people might call it pavement treasure. It's um, a cat scratcher. There we go, cat scratcher someone's left there. Uh, hoping someone else will take it away. What worries me is the story behind the cat scratcher. Um, I mean, why is it there? Why do they leave it out? Is it just because the cat doesn't really like the cat scratcher? Or is it something more sad, you know? If the cat died and the kind of presence of the cap scratcher in the corner of the room is uh, causing distress in the household. Remembering the times their little cat would play on it and jump on it and scratch it. And they can't bear it anymore so they've put it out on the pavement in the hopes that perhaps uh, someone else will take it home and, and it'll be used once more by another happy cat. I recorded this just a couple of days before Christmas. It's really put a damper on things. I'm just out walking in the park in January. It's pretty cold and somebody's lost their hat. Someone else has put that hat on a fence in case they come back looking for it and think probably it's going to be on top of a fence. I don't understand how people lose big hats like this in the winter. Um, do you not notice when it's fallen off your head? Um, do you not feel the breeze or the draft? Um, or did someone take it off deliberately? Did they come and look at the ducks and take their hat off as a sign of respect? Put it on the fence and then completely forget about it and walk off? Or has someone left it here? for someone else to pick up? I don't know. I often wonder as well, what's the etiquette with a hat like this? It's quite a nice pink hat. It looks pretty new. Um, it's well knitted, could even be handmade. Um, how long do you leave it on the fence before you take it home and give it as a gift to your wife? Uh, if I come back next week, it's still here. I'm, I'm assuming that's okay. If I took it now, what if it's only been here 10 minutes and someone's going to come back for it at any time? It's a minefield. An 
absolutely incredible collection of uh, abandoned items on the pavement I found here. A real treasure trove. Um, it's like Kim's game. It's five things here. If you walk away and come back in five minutes, one of them will be gone and you have to try and guess or remember which one it was. I mean, it's amazing. There's a thing for holding letters. It's kind of a weird box with a hole in it. A thing for putting cutlery in. Uh, I think that's a tray for a plant pot. Not the actual plant pot, the tray for the plant pot. But best of all, one of the most incredible things I've ever seen. It's a packet of wrapping paper. Someone thought, don't really need this anymore. I'll put it out on the pavement just in case someone needs some wrapping paper for a birthday. Because um, quite often I walk along the street thinking, if only someone would leave some birthday wrapping paper out for me, that'd be really handy. But when I look really closely, it's from Woolworths. That thing must have been in the house for years. And then finally they thought, I've had enough. I'm putting that out on the pavement. Someone will have it. It was only after I walked away that I realised that they'd left the wrapping paper out for anyone who wanted to take any of the items to give away as a gift. So not only had they given you that gift, they'd also given you the means to wrap it up. It's incredibly thoughtful. Here's a real favourite. One shoe. An abandoned shoe sitting on a wall. That I, that, that I saw. Yeah, what do you think happened to this shoe? How do you think it got here? I think someone just threw it over the fence and landed here. Just one shoe? So they're just walking around with one shoe on? <laughs> Maybe. Or maybe it's just too small for them. And they thought, I'm not going to keep it with the other shoe, I'm just going to throw it away. It's just one shoe's too small but the other one still fits. So there might be another one hiding somewhere else. Oh, it's like a shoe treasure hunt. <laughs> mm. Mm. That, yep, that's the shoe. Here we are then, a real classic. An old, tatty, fingerless glove stuck on the spike of a fence outside a park. Probably been here for days. No one's coming back for this. I thought as I passed it that um, it looked like it was actually giving everybody the finger, which I thought was a bit nasty, but it wasn't. It's actually the index finger that's pointing us. So it's pointing towards the skies, maybe showing us where his brother, the other, fingerless glove has gone. Um, I'm glad he's not giving the finger. Sort of uh, restores my faith in humanity. So I'm recording this, it's during the corona crisis now, we've got to that part of the year. And um, this is just before I think London's gonna go into full lockdown. I'm out and about having a walk in the park. Might not be able to do that for a while. And what do I come across? Poor cream hat. It's a little bit dirty. It's nicely knitted though, it looks nice. It's like this cream, a lovely knit on it. I feel really sorry for this hat because I think soon this park's gonna be emptied. And it could be waiting here for a long time for its owner to come back. On the other hand, it looks like a nice jaunty hat for the bench to wear. So no one's gonna be sitting here for a while. Mm -hmm. 